Hi, and welcome to this video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. This is the first part of a two-part series about the object repository. And the object repository is a feature that is, well, a lot sexier than it sounds. So let's get started. So imagine you have an application that you're automating. Let's call it My Calculator. This is a very simple application. It has a few buttons and uh, you have an automation that uses this application. The way you use this application is by creating a number of activities and each of these activities connect to the application using selectors. So let's say you have another automation that also uses this application. That automation then again has a few activities that use selectors and you might have another automation and another automation and they all have all of these selectors and these selectors are basically locked to the application in the state that it was in when you built these automations and that's all good but the funny thing about applications is they have a version number and the reason why they have that is that applications change they always change so if we take a look at this version one i've highlighted a button at the bottom row the clear button and uh, inside the code of the application, that button is defined as button 10. There was a lazy programmer, I know they exist for a fact, and he didn't really uh, name the button according to its uh, function. So in version 1.1, first of all, they moved the button, and that's not so important. It could have an impact, but what's more important is that the programmer actually renamed the button inside the code. So now it's called button clear instead of button 10. Where does that leave us? Well, we have all of these activities and all of these selectors and the ones involving the clear button, they don't work anymore. So we have four broken automations. So UiPath thought, okay, we want to do something about that. We want to build something in the middle, a place where you can put the description of all of these user interface elements that you use in your applications. And your automations would then, instead of talking directly to the application, they would talk to this middle layer, and that middle layer is called Object Repository. The good thing about it is it's really simple to use, and once you get used to it, you don't want to go back. So let's take a look. So in this first part, we just want to look at how we can use Object Repository to uh, build a library of selectors that we can use in other automations. Uh, in the background, I have a small application, my calculator application. And this is a simple application I built. It really doesn't do anything, but it'll give us something to build our selectors on. And in part two of the video, that will make a little bit more sense. But for now, we'll just use this. And what you usually do if you want to build some user interface automation is that you go to your activities and you can use the open application activity, and then you can indicate the window on the screen that you want to automate. And then from there, you can say, okay, I want to, uh, I want to click a button, then you drag a click activity in, you indicate the element, and I click the seven button, and then that builds a selector. And this selector it really is, uh, you know, how your automation talks to the application. It's also the Achilles heel of uh, user interface automation, because if this application over here changes, and you have, let's say, two or five automations that use this application, then you have to go into all of those applications and edit the selector and change whatever needs to be changed for it to work. And that's not really good. So you want to do something to promote reuse of the selectors that you built. And that's exactly what object repository can do. So let me delete what I just built. And in order to use the object repository that we have down here, uh, you can see that we just have a couple of buttons. We don't have any menu items or anything up at the top. So you can, um, you can go to project settings and you can do that by clicking this button, or you could go to your project uh, tab over here and then click this button here. And that will take you into the project settings. And here at the bottom, there's an option to, to enable the modern design experience. And if we uh, opt to do that, we need to reload the project. That will just take a second. And once we do that, you can see that a couple of things have happened. If we go into the uh, activities pane, we can see that the open application activity has disappeared. It's been replaced by this use application slash browser activity. The click activity is still here, but some things have changed, and I'll show you that in a second. If we go over here to the object repository, a lot of things have changed. The two buttons have disappeared, and instead we have a menu bar up here, and we have these two groups, one called Project UI Descriptors and one called UI Libraries, and that's really the bread and butter of the object repository. 
So what we can do in here in the project UI descriptors is we can begin to add selectors to our project here. We can do that in two ways. And the first thing we need to do is we need to add an application that we want to add selectors for. And we can do that by clicking this plus button up here, or we can use this capture elements or record button that we have here. And I'll click that now. Then I'll uh, click it again inside the capture elements uh, application. And then I can select my calculator application down here. And two things happen. First, it creates an application scope. Just like we know from using Excel applications or even other applications, it'll create an application scope. It'll also create a screen scope. And this screen is the only screen in this application, so I'll just call that the main screen. But we can see that it actually has a, a selector here that uses the native name that this form has inside of the application where I built the, the calculator. What I can also do is I can hover over the one button here. And if I click that, it'll actually build a selector or what they call a descriptor in object repository for this button. And uh, it'll give the element a name, a type, uh, and then it will create three types of selectors. It'll create a normal selector, it'll build a fuzzy selector that has a little more stuff in it, um, and it'll build an image selector. And we're fine with that, so we'll just press continue. And we'll see that now the one button has appeared over here. And then I can hover over the two button. And what I can do is I can just hit this uh, check mark here and that will create the element over in, in this uh, window here. So I can do that for uh, all of the buttons. In fact, I can just click the button and then hit the Enter button. And I'll just do that for uh, all of these buttons. And don't forget the Zero button. These buttons don't do anything, so I'm not going to do anything with them. The clear button down here is the last one I'm going to do, and I'm going to disable the fuzzy selector and the image selector for those. Also note that for each of the selectors that I built, I can, uh, you know, select an anchor. If you know what anchors are like, uh, basically they are sort of a sub-selector that the main selector will lean on to make sure that it selects the right element on the screen. So, and you can also add an anchor to an existing selector or descriptor just by hitting this uh, anchor button here. And there's some other settings that you can play with as well, and you can delete the target also. But for now, I'll just say that this is good for my clear button, and we can see that the attribute that it uh, really selects on is the name of the button inside of the code of this application. And that button is named button 10. And that will be important in part two of this video. So I'll click continue, and I'll click save up here. And once I do that, you can see here in our project UI descriptors, we get uh, a group called my calculator application, and we get uh, this screen called the main screen. And that screen has uh, these buttons that I've defined. Now, the way you use these uh, objects in a project is you drag the screen that the elements that you want to automate are in. You drag that into your automation, much like uh, an application scope. And uh, once you do that, it comes up with these suggestions. What activity do you want to use with this element, the screen? And really, there's only one option right here, and that's to use application browser. So I'll double click that, and it'll insert uh, that scope into my sequence here. Inside of that, I can then drag, for example, the three button. When I release it inside of this uh, sequence, it'll ask, what do you want to do with the three button? Well, I want to click it. And then it adds uh, this new click activity. And if I do the same with the seven button, I'll click it. I can do the same with the eight button. And instead of clicking it, I can just highlight the button. Uh, and then I can use the clear button here. And that will actually clear whatever I've typed using the other buttons. So I'll click that as well. So if uh, if I try to run this, you'll see that the application down here in the corner will first click the buttons 3 and 7 and they highlight the 8 button and then use the clear button to clear whatever I typed. And I'll just run it again so you can follow along. 3, 7, highlight the 8, and press clear. And that works just fine. So that's really what this is all about is building selectors, but instead of building them in this one application and storing them inside this one application, then you can do something very important. And that's really the most important thing about this, is you can take this application scope that we have here, and you can extract that as a UI library project. And what that will do is it'll create a new project. So uh, it even asked me to, to create this new project, and if I create it, it asked me, do you want to open it now? 
Mm, sure, why not? So we'll open that project and we'll see a project that contains only descriptors in it. It doesn't even have a XAML file over here to run. So if I publish this project, and I'll just publish it to a folder called descriptors. If I publish it, and that has version 1.0.1, .1, and close the project, I have a new project uh, ready here in the background called New Automation. What I can do now is I can go to Manage Packages, and I can go to my desktop uh, group here, and I can see here now that I have this my calculator app dot descriptors package available version one zero one and I can install that and save and when I do that in the object repository option here well oops I hadn't I hadn't enabled the object repository so I'll go to project settings enable the modern design experience reload the project and once we do that you can already see it over here the descriptors are now available to use in this project and that means that I can now uh, drag the same uh, screen scope into uh, this automation and I can drag the same buttons into this automation and use and once I run it it will actually use those uh, descriptors in this project and while while that's nice and convenient the real power from this comes when you do this across multiple automations where you store this uh, library in a central location on your orchestrator and then Every time you rebuild a new version of the descriptors library, you use, for example, the mass update tool, which I'll show you in part two, to update all of the applications that use that library. So that if one thing changes inside your application, say a button changes its name, then you just rebuild this library with the new descriptor, republish it, and update all of the projects that are dependent on that library. And that's very smooth and it's very valuable. So make sure you go to part two of the video to see that. Thanks. Bye.